Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, uh, excited to, to have our next session. Joining us on the stage is Yaw, who is the CEO and co-founder of Malomo. Um, before Malomo, he co-founded uh, Sticks and Leaves, a product agency that developed more than 70 web and mobile apps for clients. Uh, when he's not fearlessly leading the Malomo team, he is at home enjoying fatherhood with his two kids and wife. Um, so congrats on that. I know it wasn't too long ago that you became a father. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, his 10 lessons learned from taking 5,000 Shopify merchants, um, talking to, sorry, 5,000 Shopify merchants with post-purchase experience. So this is going to be a great talk. With that, the floor is all yours, my friend. Awesome. Thank you, Tom, Chris. Excited, excited to be here for DTC Explore session so far. I've been uh, incredible. Hopefully everyone's getting a lot of good takeaways and tips that they can put into action. I've got 20 minutes here and uh, I'll be walking through 10 lessons about post-purchase experience. I'll try to move fast and leave a few minutes for Q&A. Um, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in chat and I'll answer them at the end. Um, so quick, before we get started, wanted to do a super quick poll. When you think about post-purchase experience, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Um, drop your answers into chat. Uh, I love asking this question because I usually get all sorts of different answers and it helps me see what's on everyone's mind. Um, as we wait for our answers to roll in, I'll do a quick intro. Um, like Chris said, my name is Yao Inning. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Malomo. Um, we're an order tracking platform for high growth merchants. Before launching Malomo, I started and ran a dev agency called Sticks and Leaves for about seven years. We built 100 plus apps and websites for direct to consumer software and e commerce businesses. And after seeing several e commerce businesses uh, struggle around improving their post purchase experience, my co founder and I decided to pivot our agency and focus solely um, on this problem. And that company today is Momo. Uh, so I've had the privilege of speaking with thousands of Shopify merchants the past four years at Malomo and the prior seven years of my agency. Um, so today I'm going to boil down those conversations into 10 lessons about post-purchase experience. Um, amazing. Uh, so uh, first, let's, let's dive in. So lesson one, um, and it's an easy one, understand your post-purchase default settings. So this probably sounds obvious, but it's one of the most overlooked things merchants do. So many merchants had absolutely no idea what experience was being delivered after a customer bought from them. They were unsure of what emails were sent um, you know, uh, to customers, who was sending them, what platform they're coming from, if they were even delivered, um, where they were driving customers to actually track their packages, um, list goes on. So that's the first thing I recommend people do is understand what the current experience looks like and get a baseline understanding of what's going on. If you're using Shopify, the default settings for your email notifications and tracking page probably look something like this. Um, one of the first things I recommend doing is actually being a consumer of your store, right? Going and placing an order um, and seeing what the experience is like firsthand. And then make note of all the touch points you're delivering or lack thereof that you'd expect to see. So you may be surprised in both a good way and bad way about what your customers are experiencing when they buy from you. And understanding that first and foremost is really key to figuring out what to do and how to improve. Uh, lesson two, it's not about the features of any one post-purchase platform, but rather your brand strategy that will determine your success. So it's easy to get lost in a list of all the features one platform might have versus another, and then make your buying decision based on you know, the vendor that has the most number of things. And this doesn't just go for a post-purchase platform. It goes for any platform, um, right? The problem is that software vendors, you know, we are really great at selling our features. So we'll often convince you, um, and vendors will often convince you, right, that you'll need features that you may not need or ever use. So instead of letting the vendor drive your buying strategy, you'll be amazed at how clear your buying decisions become when you first focus on your brand strategy and then how the platform can effectively help you unlock that strategy. In, in this way, you're basing your decisions on what you actually need and not what the vendor tells you you need. Um, if you're not sure how to formulate your strategy, here's a really great quick exercise. Start broad with your goals and then go narrow over time. So when thinking about post-purchase, we often see merchants will end up falling into three buckets. Do you want your post-purchase experience to be a CX and support channel um, to really communicate with your customers and drive down support tickets? 
a brand building channel to really elevate the brand um, in, in, your, in your consumer's mind? Or is this a revenue channel? Are you trying to drive cross-sell and upsell post-purchase during, during the order tracking experience? Once you choose a bucket, then narrow it even further from there. For example, if, if we want our post-purchase experience to be a brand building channel, then we need to think about what are the ways in which we could build brand, right? We could reinforce the mission. We could entertain people while they wait for their order. We could educate them and make them better informed of the brand or the products that they buy. Um, uh, so, you know, once you have that strategy, for example, if you choose education, right? Once you have that strategy, it's easier to then think about how you want the tracking experience to manifest that strategy and then choose the best software platform to partner with to help you realize your vision. All right, speaking of education, lesson three is that consumers absolutely love it when you educate them about your brand during post-purchase. Uh, so click-through rates uh, that we've seen across education-centric content see a ton of engagement. Um, education can take many different forms, right? It can be product-centric, like here are creative ways to use or consume the product, um, tips for how to get the most out of the product, or even instructions on how to care for the product to, to make sure it, it keeps its longevity. Um, but they can also be centric, like highlighting your mission or having the founder share the founding story um, of the brand. To give you a quick example, House, an aperitif, aperitif drink brand, combines a few of these elements in a really compelling way on their tracking experience. They share everything from how to store your bottle between uses uh, recipe ideas, and even what to do when you've consumed it all, like how to upcycle the bottles as a flower holder. Just super clever way to keep the brand front and center, even well after that consumer is done using the product. Okay, lesson four, you shouldn't invest in a post-purchase experience just to check it off your list of things to implement because you saw some other cool or innovative brand doing it, right? Order tracking is a super intimate channel. Your customers' emotions are in a heightened state of both excitement about the package arriving and anxiety, hoping that it makes it to them. And so you should deliver an experience that is representative of what you stand for, right? Think about the DNA of your brand, what makes it special and unique. When you start from, from that, creating the right experience actually becomes effortless, um, right? Try not to look at what everyone else is doing do what feels right and natural for you and what your brand stands for. All right, lesson five, merchants that developed a great experience first set goals based on their strategy. We've all probably heard the saying, right? What gets measured gets managed. So if you don't know what you're optimizing for, your experience will show it. It will feel uncoordinated and disjointed. So depending on your strategy, if you don't know where to start, like here are, here are a couple of example metrics you might want to track. So if your goal is customer experience, you might want to start measuring the percentage of orders that are experiencing a problem, for example. Um, you might want to look at uh, your performance against your fulfillment or your carrier SLAs, right? How, how, how on time are we at delivering our packages? Um, you might also want to look at the number of support tickets related to shipping. Um, and try to drive those things down over time. If your strategy might be more revenue-centric, you might be looking at repeat revenue. Um, you might be looking at conversion rates uh, or, or even retained revenue, right? How many people bought from us and didn't cancel their order because their problem, their order experienced some sort of problem during delivery? Um, uh, alternatively, if your strategy is more brand-centric during post-purchase, you might look at the number of tracking impressions that you're delivering, right? Um, the engagement rate that's happening on the tracking experience. What are the things that people are engaging with? What percentage of people are engaging with content versus not? Um, you also might be looking at click-through rate or, or the, the, the amount of traffic that's coming back to your storefront that's sourced from your tracking experience. So lots of great goals to start off with if you're just getting into post-purchase experience. All right, every merchant I know is in a perpetual state of implementing new tools. I don't know like how you guys uh, um, find any time to do anything else, but you're, you're constantly implementing new tools and campaigns. 
And so uh, oftentimes it's hard to execute a post-purchase strategy effectively. We've seen that merchants that partnered with an agency to help get their post-purchase experience up were actually a step ahead. Um, they moved faster, they optimized more, they saw much better results against the things that they were measuring. And I don't think that's a coincidence, right? I highly recommend hiring an agency partner to work with to either get your experience stood up or help you iterate and optimize the experience over time. Um, if you need a recommendation, here's a great list of agencies who are way ahead of the game when it comes to post-purchase strategy and execution. A few are even speaking today at DTCX, so make sure you, you tune in to those sessions if you haven't. Um, if you need a recommendation, feel free to reach out to, to us, um, you know, to, to based on your goals, your vertical, what you're trying to accomplish, I'm happy to point you in the right direction. All right, lesson seven. As merchants start to plan out their experience, we often get asked how many notifications are too many. It's a hot button topic. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily the right question to ask. Um, the key here is not to think about the number of notifications you're sending, but about the types of notifications and the value um, of each one to the customer. So to give you an analogy, let's say you're meeting a friend for dinner. You're supposed to meet at six. You get to the restaurant at six, 20 minutes goes by your friend is nowhere to be seen. So you text them asking where they're at and they let, they let you know, you know, they, they're not actually going to get there till seven. You're probably pretty pissed off, right? Like if they were going to be late, they let you know. Um, I call that a key moment, right? Your customers care a lot about where their orders are. They check tracking on average four and a half times per order. Keeping them updated when things deviate from expectations is one of the most important things you can do to build trust with your customers. We often recommend our brands map out the customer journey with key moments around post-purchase. And it's important to remember that not all of these messages are going to go out to every single customer. But when these events do happen, like a delay or an exception, for example, they'll matter a lot in that moment to the customers that experience them. So make sure to plan a strategy for each moment. All right, lesson eight, start with a strong foundation that is built on trust and transparency with your customers. How can you develop trust? Um, uh, there are three super simple ways. One, be specific when you're following up with customers. Two, be proactive when following up with customers. And three, be honest when you're following up with customers. Uh, this email from Mint Mongoose is a textbook in communication best practices. So they lead with an email that specifically calls out what's going wrong with the order, that the shipping company couldn't deliver the package to them. They were proactive in letting the customer know exactly what happened um, and what they should do next to ensure the package can be re-delivered, re right? Check the address, make sure that the address is correct. If it is, let us let our team know. Um, if it's not, right, reply back with the right address. And then their fun fact at the end, at the bottom in pink, letting their customers know they're a small mama-run business who's grateful for their customers is honest and transparent, right? In a moment that might be frustrating to consumers, they did all the right things to diffuse any potential customer frustration and actually turn that negative moment into a trust building moment that matters. All right, lesson nine, driving subscriptions is, is a top of mind topic for many, many merchants right now. Um, the ones that are winning with subscriptions, um, they make subscriptions an important part of their pre and their post-purchase strategy. Um, so I'm obviously going to focus on the post-purchase strategy here. Soylent does something so smart where they actually segment their tracking experience to drive their subscription business. For subscribers, they send those customers to a tracking experience that is very brand-centric, right? A, a really on-brand, great hero image, content to reinforce the brand story underneath that. And then they, they do a really uh, nice way of highlighting their mission and, and, and driving that mission through referrals. Um, really, really smart. While on the other hand, first time buyers, right, are shown the benefits of subscribing. Um, some, some of the most popular subscription products that that customer might be interested in. Uh, and then some product education. 
Uh, this strategy is potent and works extremely well to drive retention in the subscriber base and adoption from non-subscribers. All right, lesson 10, and this is a big one. Um, while most people design their tracking experience for desktop first, mobile reigns supreme. So we've seen that 83% of tracking views happen on a mobile device. It's not just about the tracking experience, right? It's, it's also SMS and email too. Your customers are on the go. When you send them a delivery notification, you're likely interrupting them in between something that they're doing. So you need to design your experience for their lifestyle and their lifestyle is usually mobile first. Uh, a lot of brands focus on, oops, excuse me. A lot of brands focus on conversion rate optimization for their storefronts, right? You're, you're testing all sorts of things to drive conversion during the purchase experience. So if I told you you were driving 15% of your overall website traffic to your tracking experience, why would you not be testing, uh, testing your post-purchase experience the same way, right? Testing your H1s, your navigation, your CTAs. Uh, Felina knows this, and they actually run a different nav on their order tracking experience than for their uh, purchase experience. So on the left is the purchase experience, and you'll see, right, they, uh, they show you um, the uh, search and cart because that's super important when you're browsing. But during the post-purchase experience, customers care more about uh, delivery FAQs, doing returns, or shopping again. It's important to think about where your customers are in their journey with your brand and what their needs will be in that moment, and then design and iterate your post-purchase experience accordingly. All right, there are a lot of customers that you likely admire that are doing this today. You've probably bought from merchants and experienced a really great post-purchase experience. Um, and some maybe where you experience a not great post-purchase experience, but um, you know, if you feel like you're late to the party, you're not, right? In fact, it's still very early days and taking advantage of post-purchase experience to creatively build your brand 